Hey, Alison Verhalen here with AV Writing Services, and today I am talking about what it takes to be an SEO content strategist. Whether you want to become an SEO content strategist or whether you're looking to hire one, we're gonna show you what it takes so that we can either get you on the road to become one or so that you know what to look out for if you're looking to hire an SEO content strategist. So this all came up because uh, last week we had a video and a blog that we were putting out uh, that was about the future of blogging. Uh, what does it look like in 2020? And we shared it on our LinkedIn page and someone commented uh, as kind of a joke, but also seriously, uh, that the future of blogging includes people subscribing to SEO companies, um, SEO strategy companies like Moz and HubSpot and Content Marketing Institute and putting it out there and just like reading a report here and there and maybe repurposing the content and saying, look, I'm an SEO content strategist and they don't really know what they're talking about because they just read one, maybe two reports. So that got us thinking about what does it really take to become an SEO content strategist? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So number one is you have to be studying constantly. There is no college degree that I know of so far to become an SEO content strategist, right? And even if there were a degree, it would be obsolete probably by the time you graduated because the world of SEO is constantly changing. Google is updating their algorithm literally multiple times per day. They're releasing big changes to the algorithm um, multiple times per year. So you constantly have to be keeping up with that. You should absolutely follow and subscribe to places like Moz and Content Marketing Institute and AV Writing Services. And Google has their own blog where they talk about stuff like this and they, they'll, they'll announce those big changes on their blog. Um, and follow them on social media, wherever it is you hang out on social media, follow those, those hashtags, SEO, SEO strategy, SEO tips, and see what people are talking about because that's when you'll get all those updates uh, when, when stuff happens in the world of SEO. And that's a constant process that's never gonna change. You always, always, always need to be uh, reading those reports. And then number two is you have to compare sources because there are a lot, like we said, a lot of people out there are claiming that they know a lot about SEO when they don't really know that much about SEO. So you're gonna have to kind of wade through all the BS to find out who really knows what they're talking about. And even the people who do know what they're talking about sometimes have conflicting data. Sometimes even the reliable people, someone will say one thing and someone else finds something different in their report. Sometimes it's a matter of the tools that they're using or what metrics they're measuring or the audience that they, they measured. So it all comes down to those different things, which leads us to number three is that you should be testing your own data. Uh, absolutely study SEO, see what other people are talking about, but never take their word for it because what works for one person's audience might not necessarily work for your audience. So do the testing and see what works for your audience and see what gets you those results, what gets you showing up in, um, in searches and gets drives traffic to your website. I mean, we were just talking not too long ago uh, about uh, Google and the different thing, uh, domain authority. Um, and how domain authority, some people think domain authority is huge, but some websites that have a very high domain authority don't get the traffic that you would think that they would if they have such a high domain authority. And they don't necessarily show up for um, target keywords. So again, what one person thinks is really important might not be that important for a different website. So always measure your own results and don't ever rely too heavily on one source. That's another reason why you have to compare different sources. Don't read just one report because even the reliable reports are gonna have things that are a little bit different. So measure your own data. And in order to do that, number four, you're gonna need your own tools. Um, need to, you need to have the right tools. You need to have at least one, preferably two uh, keyword analysis tools. You need to have Google Analytics or something similar that shows you uh, how many people are coming to your site. When are they coming to your site? Um, I was just looking at that data and found surprisingly there are people coming to my site in the middle of the night, which I never thought would happen um, because it's, you know, we're a business. Uh, we work in the B2B industry. I should think a lot of people would be on our site from, you know, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or somewhere thereabouts, but no, they're on the website all day and all night long. I found that really surprising. So get those tools and again, measure your own data. Don't ever make any assumptions. Um, you also need a uh, content topic generator, um, although you can also get that with uh, your keyword research, but it never hurts to compare 
and contrast. Um, and also I love uh, CoSchedule's Headline Analyzer. That is a free tool uh, that helps you just what it says. It analyzes your headline. Headlines are key. Uh, so you gotta use all those tools. You gotta make sure that you've got all those metrics and you're getting the results that you want. And the only way to do that is with the right tools. A content strategist is only as good as her tools. Uh, and then courses. Do you, there are a lot of SEO courses online. Do you need to take a course? I would not say that you need to take a course. And if you do take a course, be very careful. Because again, just like there are a lot of people out there saying that they're SEO content strategists and they don't really know what they're talking about, a lot of them are like, well, people want classes in SEO, so I'll offer an online course, I'll offer a webinar in SEO. And maybe they don't really know that much about SEO, they're just putting it out there because it's a hot topic right now. It's a huge keyword, a lot of people are looking for it, a lot of people are wondering, what is SEO? How does it work? How can I get it for my website? How can I use it to build my business? So people are banking on the fact that a lot of people are searching for it and a lot of people don't really know what they're looking for when they're determining a, a good, reliable SEO content strategist versus someone who is just now getting in the game and figuring out a little bit about it. Uh, so do your research, uh, make sure that whoever is giving the course is reliable and I know it's tempting to want to wave that shiny certificate in front of clients or employers but you got to make sure that certificate is worth something before you put out hundreds if not thousands of dollars for that certificate so again proceed with caution there are reliable people and there are certainly worthwhile uh, classes out there but not all of them are so be very careful be careful of the testimonials. If they have Google reviews, that's better, um, but even those are a little iffy. But their own testimonials can be anyone. I mean, literally, they could have made them up, written them themselves, and attached them to a stock photo and a made-up name and company and said, "This is a, these are the people who loved our courses, and they're not even real people. So be a little wary. Ideally, you should know someone personally, or even if you just know someone else online who took the course and either had a great experience with it or not such a great experience with it. Try and do that research and get that buy-in before, before you cough up all that money. Um, if you want to take a class, there are webinars and classes online to use certain tools, like Google Analytics provides a ton of data, and a lot of people don't even know what to do with all of that data, so there are, all, there are courses, for example, in like how to use Google Analytics and how to get the most out of that. Um, how to use WordPress if your website is on WordPress. How to use things like Yoast to make sure that you're optimizing your website. Those are courses that you might want to take. Um, I wouldn't say like one big SEO course, but if you want to take courses to learn how to use those tools so that you can be a great SEO content strategist, I would recommend that. Um, you do need to do market research. So it's not just about the keywords, it, I mean, that's part of it, but it's also about what's going on in the market, what is your target audience interested in, what are their pain points, what questions are they asking. Never rely on your own inspiration. Never, you can absolutely take as inspiration some, a conversation that you had with someone at a networking event, for example, or someone, that, a client that you had a phone conversation with. Stuff like that is always good, but back it up with the, with the market research and make sure that those kinds of questions are questions that a lot of other people are asking instead of just a handful of people because if a lot of people are asking that question and there's not a lot of content out there on it then that's an indication that there's a content gap and you can fill that gap and drive traffic to your website so always do that market analysis see what other people are offering what they're charging what people are willing to pay for these products and services you got to know all that and then analyze the competition. How much traffic are they getting to their website? And this goes back to the tools. There are tools that you can use to go to your, to your competition's website and see how much traffic they're getting and get an idea of how much money they're making, how many sales they're making, how many of their website, um, how many of their customers are coming from Google, for example, or social media and finding that website and getting turned into from leads into customers. You got to know what they're doing. And you can even, once you get more comfortable with SEO and keywords, you can even kind of start to identify like what's an SEO strategy, what's a keyword. I was reading an article not too long ago about uh, content marketing and reading something and just something popped out at me and I was like, oh, that's a keyword, isn't it? 
And I went, it didn't pop out at me. It wasn't like it didn't belong where it was. It's just because I'm so familiar with the world of content marketing and keywords that I was able to identify as that, that as a keyword and able to do, go back and do the research and be like, yep, sure enough, that's a keyword. And they put that in there very intentionally to try and show up in those searches. And then I can use that same keyword because if this very reputable site that I'm not going to name <laughs> is using that keyword in their content, then it's probably worthwhile for me to use it in my content. So you can, when you get really comfortable with it and start looking at what your competition is writing about, you can kind of reverse engineer their SEO strategy and start putting those same things um, in your own uh, content strategy. Get the get those keywords and the right slug and the right content length and everything because a lot of that information they're going to put out there they're going to say what they're doing they're not going to say everything that they're doing but they're going to give some of their secret sauce away and you can kind of figure out the rest and put together your own seo content strategy but again analyze their results and make sure that they're actually showing up in searches for those keywords for those target keywords um, to make sure that their their strategy is working because if their strategy is not working then you don't want to you don't want to uh, copy something that's not working. And again, if it, it works for them, it might not necessarily work for your audience. So not only should you always be studying, you should always, always, always be testing your own results. Never assume that because something worked last month, it's gonna work again this month. Because again, Google is constantly changing that algorithm and stuff that used to work doesn't necessarily work anymore. And what works right now might not work next month. So you gotta stay on top of that. Um, all of that data, including your own results from your content marketing efforts. So constantly, constantly be checking in on at least once a month, I would say check in on those, those KPIs, those key performance indices. And finally, the last thing you need to do is talk shop. Everyone says that in order to really understand a topic, you have to be able to teach it. When I was in school, I know we were told to take notes and we were always told to put it in our own words. We were never told to copy it. We had to put it in our own words. And that's because that really makes you think about the, the topic and it really makes you understand it. And it, if you can't put it in your own words, that's a, that, that is an indication that you don't really understand it, that you are still confused and maybe you need a little more clarification on it. And that's fine. Go ahead and get that clarification. Go back to the material, ask an expert a question. That's totally fine, but you have to be able to regurgitate that information, whether it's on a blog, whether it's with someone at a networking event, whether it's as a speaker at a networking event, make sure that you can explain it and host those Q and A's. You can host them on social media, on Reddit. Facebook is great for that. Just pop up and say, hey, what do people have questions on in this particular industry? And people will come up with their questions and if you can't answer them, that shows that you don't really know the, in, the material, which is fine. That gives you a chance to go back and study, go back to step one and study, 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 and make sure that you are ready to answer all those questions. And then you will be an SEO content strategist. So finally, if you're looking to hire an SEO content strategist, what should you look for? Well, as we just said, they gotta be ready to talk shop. Uh, ask them a few questions. Uh, ask them about the, the right tools. Uh, maybe make that a requirement in your job posting. Make sure that this person needs to know Google Analytics. They need to know the particular keyword tool that you like to use. Whatever tools it is that you're using to measure your content in your strategy, make sure that they know how to use those tools. And you might even want to give a little test because a lot of people will say they know how to use it and they don't really know how to use it. So. Again, be ready with those questions. And when you're interviewing them, ask them questions. You should know enough about the world of SEO. You don't have, have to be an expert, but you should have enough of an idea to know when someone is BSing their way through a conversation and when they really know the answers to your questions. Um, I had a conversation with a client not too long ago. He was asking me a question and I answered it and he was like blown away by my answer. He said he had just thrown me a softball, right? And I not only hit it, I knocked it out of the park. I was so good at demonstrating that I really knew what I was talking about, that he was like, okay, this is someone who knows her stuff and this is someone that I wanna work with. So make sure that whoever you're talking to is really able to answer those questions. 
and um, you don't, they don't necessarily need the certificate. Um, you do probably want to make sure that they have a degree in English or journalism or communications or marketing or psychology. I have a degree in English and a degree in psychology, which is perfect for content marketing. I've got those communication skills and the language skills, and then I also have those psychology skills. I know how to motivate people. Um, so they don't all have to have degrees in English and psychology, but it should be a related field. Um, and again, ask them what they study. What do they subscribe to? Do they follow Moz and HubSpot and Content Marketing Institute and AV Writing Services? Or are they following people you've never heard of? Or are they completely unable to tell you who is an influencer in the world of SEO? If they can't even mention like Neil Patel, then they probably don't know much about the world of SEO and therefore you can move on to the next candidate. So that is our tips. Those are our tips for uh, how to become an SEO content strategist and how to look out for and identify a true SEO content strategist. Again, I am Allison Verhalen with AV Writing Services. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. We can answer all your SEO questions. Um, we are at avwritingservices.com and our email is info at avwritingservices.com. I'm Allison Verhalen. Have a great week and happy marketing.